Hello there, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software, where I talk about digital art and game development using Unity. Today I thought I'd talk about something that might be of interest to some of you. If you probably have heard of it if you've been doing game development for a while, but it's called object pooling. So typically in a lot of the tutorials you see for Unity game development, there's a typical pattern where you just instantiate and destroy game objects. And this is probably okay for most small games where you're not instantiating a whole lot of objects and destroying them. But in larger games or in games where you instantiate and destroy lots of objects frequently, this can cause noticeable performance degradation, especially on lower end devices or phones or mobile devices. Fortunately, there is a solution. And that solution is object pooling. So object pooling where, is where instead of instantiating and destroying objects repeatedly, you only instantiate objects once, and then instead of destroying them, you deactivate them and keep a reference to them in a pool or a collection. So the next time you need to use an object of that same type, you just grab it from the pool and enable it. And so I'll show you what that looks like in practice. I've got this little sample scene here, and basically all I've got is a little demo object and the demo object um, all it does is it is going to repeatedly spawn some explosion effects so I'll show you what that looks like if I hit play and I click spawn you'll see that it's just spawning some explosions in random locations now if I stop spawning you'll see that the objects that were created get destroyed so they were created and now they're destroyed so i'll do that again and you can see them being created over there and then when i stop spawning you'll see they get destroyed so there's five left and now they're all gone so what would that look like if you were using object pulling so I'm going to turn on use pooling and I'm going to spawn again. You notice you don't see any objects being created up here, but if I expand this don't destroy on load, you can see there's several objects in here. And then instead of being deleted when, when they're not used, instead of being destroyed, they're just deactivated and you can see they get reused from the pool. So every time we spawn five more of these explosions, we're just grabbing five deactive ones, uh, unactive ones from the pool and activating them. So I'll show you how that looks like in code. And be before I do that, I should point out that starting in Unity 2021, um, Unity is actually providing built-in object pooling. Uh, I will not go into that in detail um, Taro Dev did a really good video on that uh, where he explained the built-in object pooling in Unity uh, 2021. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out his video. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description so you can go see it. Uh, he gives a really good explanation of all the different types of pooling that they provide uh, and how to use them and give some examples. And I, I highly recommend you check out his channel if you haven't already. But we're going to go ahead and dive into my code. So I have this object pooler game object. It's just an empty game object. And I've added an object pooler script to it. So if we open that up, I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. I basically, uh, I'm using a uh, singleton pattern. So I have a static instance to the object pooler. Uh, and this is so it will not get destroyed in between scenes and I can access it from anywhere simply through this static instance variable. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. I also have a dictionary of strings. Uh, it's a, it maps a string to a queue of game objects. <laughs> so a queue is basically uh, a collection where you add things to it, you enqueue them, and then you dequeue objects from the bottom of the queue. So you push things in uh, to the top and you pull them out from the bottom. So basically it's a first in, first out um, queue. And so I instantiate that. It's just a dictionary of string to queues of game objects. 
And then I have the typical Unity callback. So when we awake, uh, if this is the first time this instance has awoken, I save this instance. So in the future, we just access this single singleton instance. And then I said, don't destroy and load on the game object. So that way, when you reload a new scene, this object will not get destroyed. Otherwise, if this is a new instance, I just destroy it because I only care about the first one. We're always going to use that first instance. That's the typical singleton pattern that most developers use in Unity. So then if you want to spawn an object, I have a few different methods to spawn a game object. Uh, essentially, you pass in your prefab, and then I have some optional parameters. So in this case, the only optional parameter is set active, and it defaults to true. So if you don't supply that, it will enable this immediately. Um, I always check to see if my instance is null. And then I use my instance variable and call DQ game object. Uh, and I'll go and show you that code in a minute. Um, and by the way, if you're wondering why, why would you ever want to use this code if Unity is providing built-in um, object pooling, uh, the reason is that's not available until Unity 2021. And so if you're using an older version of Unity like I am, uh, my project is Unity 2023.3.19F1, um, then you want to have something you can use as an alternative. And also, you might just want to see how this works under the cover. <laughs> and I'll include a link to this in the description too, so you can grab this and plug it into your project to play around with. So I call it DQ game object. Basically, this is going to check to see if an instance of the type represented by this prefab exists in our queue. And if it doesn't, then we're going to actually instantiate a new one. Otherwise, we just take that guy and then we set it's active to whatever that value that parameter was. So if that was true, we're going to set it active true, otherwise set active false. And we return that game object. And I have some overloaded methods that take different parameters. So this one lets you specify a position and a rotation as well as set active. Okay, so that's spawning. Uh, despawning. So when we despawn a game object, if it's null, there's nothing to despawn, I just return. The first thing I do is I deactivate it. Because remember, when you're using object pool and you're not destroying objects, you're just deactivating them. And then I'm adding it to our queue. So I grab the queue for this prefab and I add this object to the queue. So the next time um, you want to spawn an object and you call DQ game object, it will grab that object out of the queue. And so get queue, we'll go take a look at that for a second. I basically checked to see if my dictionary contains that prefab name. Now I added an extension method here because if you look at what is stored under don't destroy unload, I just want to point this out because this is important. I will start spawning objects. I'll pause the game. If we expand don't destroy unload, Oh, I didn't tell it to use pooling. Let me tell it to use pooling and then spawn. Okay, so now if I expand, why aren't you showing me anything here? Oh, here we go. All right, you'll notice that these guys have clone in parentheses appended to their name. So I'm instantiating an explosion effect but the name actually says clone. So even though I'm instantiating an explosion effect, the name says clone. So <coughs> if, I, if I cue explosion effect clone and then I look for explosion effect, it's not going to find it. So I added this extension method called base name. And all this does is replace clone with an empty string. So this is an extension method for game object. So I'm just taking the, the prefab's name, stripping 
parentheses, clone parentheses from it. And I'm checking to see if my dictionary contains an item with that name. And if it does, then I return that queue. And remember that queue is just a queue of game objects. Otherwise, I create a new queue and then I add an entry for that base name with that queue. So <clears throat> now our dictionary will contain a mapping from that prefab name to that queue. So that's how that works. So we get our queue or we create a queue and return it. So let's look at how we instantiate a game object. So you remember when we're dequeuing um, or when we're spawning, if, I, if we didn't get one from our dequeue game object, we want to instantiate a game object. So I get the queue for that prefab and that will create it if we don't need it. I don't even need to store this variable because I'm not using it. I can just call get queue. This makes sure that a queue will exist when we go to dequeue it. Um, so then I instantiate using the base typical method provided by Unity, instantiate an instance of that prefab. I call don't destroy unload on it. So we'll keep it around even when we're done with it, even if we change scenes. And then I call set active based on the value of this parameter. And I return that game object. And of course I have different versions of that with different parameters. And I even had one that took a transform, but it looks like I don't use that anywhere in my demo. I could probably get rid of that, but you might have a use for that. Okay, so that's all the pooling code. So let's take a look at how I utilize it. So I had these checkboxes, spawn and use sp uh, pooling. And so if I'm spawning, I call invoke repeating spawn explosions. The first time I do it, I want to do it immediately. And then I'm doing it one second thereafter, every second. So I'm going to keep spawn repeating unless I uncheck spawn, in which case I call cancel invoke. So none of that has anything to do with the pooling. That's just how I'm implementing this little demo. So spawn explosions. This shows you the difference. If you're using pooling, then instead of calling instantiate, like I would normally do, I'm calling my spawn game object, which is the static method, public static method on my object pooler. I'm passing it in my explosion prefab and I'm getting a random position that I'm spooling it at. That's all this extra code here. And setting it to quaternion identity and I'm saying I don't want it to be enabled right away. Um, and the reason I don't want it to be enabled right away is because I want to do something in this explosion effect object I created. I'm going to call an init method. I'm going to pass in a Boolean telling it that it's using pooling. And I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, I'll just go ahead and go into that code. So the explosion effect grabs the particle system off of that game object. So remember, we're spawning explosion. So the explosion is just a particle system. So I get that so I can check to see if it's alive. Basically, is alive will be true if the particle system is still spawning particles <clears throat> or displaying any particles. If we are alive, I just return true out of, I just return out of update. However, if we're not alive anymore, I'm either going to destroy the game object or if I'm using pooling, I'm going to despawn the game object. So I need to know if I'm using pooling or not. So I added this init method that takes a Boolean use pool, uh, pooling and I just store it in this member variable here. So that's all that is. So I'm either going to instantiate if I'm not using pooling or I'm going to use spawn game object if I am using pooling. And so every time I need an explosion prefab object, I just go and grab it from the pool. And if one didn't already exist, the pooler will create it and create a queue for it. And then when I destroy it with this despawn game object, it'll get deactivated and add it to that queue. So the next time I come in, if it exists in the queue, it'll grab it, I'll activate it, and it will display on the screen. So that's it for object pooling.
Um, I hope you found that useful. And uh, if you did, uh, I'd appreciate it if you clicked that like and subscribe button. It really helped me out on my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel. And uh, even share a link to my channel on your favorite uh, social media sites uh, to help me grow. And if you want to be notified the next time I go live or the next time I post a video, uh, click that notification bell as well. So once again, thanks so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful to you and is helpful on your game development journey. Have a great day.